Our next guest to join us, uh, so many people miss the theater because it, there are some things that you can put it online, but it's just not the same. And going to the mm-hmm. theater is one of those. But people are trying to get very creative throughout the pandemic. With us now, let's go ahead and bring in Chris Berryman. He's with the Detroit Theater and Collective. Thank you, Chris, for being with us. Thank you for having me, Ronnie. So uh, tell us about the uh, past year. Challenging, to say the least, right? (laughs) Sure thing, yes. Very challenging, but interesting. Um, So it was March 2020, and uh, Detroit Theater Collective, we're sort of a pop-up theater company, and we find places to uh, perform our shows. And we were in the middle of a... uh, the Midwest premiere of the production of a play called Anything, which was directed by my colleague, T.M. Rollins. And um, we were really excited because the last weekend was completely, almost completely sold out. And we were so excited to bring this uh, work that we had been laboring on for more than a year to a bigger audience. But then COVID really hit and all the, the warnings were coming out of the media and um, we had to have a little powwow and like a lot of uh, arts groups around the world we had to shut down the show and we also had to shut down operations for the indefinite future so um it was devastating for for everyone i think but it was um you know i have to say that it was uh, it just felt like somebody just pulled the floor out from under us um, and i know a lot of people experienced the same thing and with that this has also been a year of change and opportunity. Yeah. How did you use that time to grow as uh, as an actor uh, and as an author as well? Yes. Um, well, it, I, it's interesting how it came about. So basically, that I was just quarantined in my in my house in Detroit, you know, watching the bleak news, and I'm not really sure what was going to happen. Uh, in the future, Zooming with friends, having cocktails on Zoom here and there. Um, but I started, this is this is going to sound a little woo-woo, but it's really not. And I started having um, some interesting dreams. And um, they had these, you know, sort of strange pictures in them, some interesting voices and messages. And it kept happening. So I uh, decided to write it down. A friend of mine encouraged me to um, record it. And... Um, I, you know, looking at these materials, I just thought, well, what can I do with this? So somehow the idea to make a kid's book came into being. And um, uh, that's how the book Flying Saucer Visions was born. But indeed, because my background is theater and film, it did feel like I was producing a film page by page um, of this work. So it definitely kept me busy and uh, revealed new things to me during this pandemic. Otherwise, we have been developing works um, with the collective and um, reading plays on Zoom. And um, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the podcast theater. I think it's interesting, but to me, it's more like a more like a broadcast. You know, like theater to me is a live event, um, and that's fine. It definitely has a place, but um, just for me, I'm more focused on the future and when we can make theater again. So we've got some interesting stuff in development. So with that, um, because you are not performing in person right now, correct? Correct. And we won't until it's safe to do so. When do you anticipate? Is that when you and your staff members are able to get vaccinated in April? um, A lot of us are are, vaccinated already. A lot of us are getting vaccinated. Um, I think we're just going to have to see month by month. And we have hopes by, we have two works in uh, development. So we're hoping that we can do something before the end of the year. But if not, we can just put it off till next year. We'll just have to see, I think. So when you say you have works in development, what is that like in the middle of COVID? Are you doing this over Zoom or are you guys still getting together in small groups? Well, we have have gotten together on Zoom and we've gotten together in my backyard when it was warm enough to do so to um, sort of plot things out and we share It's amazing what you can do over the phone as well. We share, you know, drawings and ideas and have conversations. So we have an outdoor musical planned that could be maybe done in backyards. And it's based on the the Book of Enoch. And um, 
And then there's another play that we have in development that will probably need um, a theater. So we're going to have to wait and see. That's a play called Mud. And we'll have to wait and see what we can actually gather in a more traditional theater setting for that one. We're talking with Chris Berryman. He is an actor and an author with the Detroit Theater Collective. As we continue to go on, um, when it comes to practicing, and because so much of it is feeding off of another person's energy, how have you had to adapt that throughout the COVID crisis? That's a really good point because that is the missing element, the live um the, you know, this person to person communication and creativity, but the zoom, this, this, uh, technology is interesting how, what it can capture and it can, you can feel connected on some level. It seems, I don't think it's quite the same thing, but, um, thank God that we have it because it has allowed some sort of connection and some sort of, uh, way to uh, socialize and create. Um, but. I'm just really excited because, you know, getting together outdoors person to person has started to happen again. And that's really, that is really making the creative juices flow once again. So typically are your plays like just a few people or are they larger productions? They are usually smaller ensemble pieces. And um, there's usually some sort of text uh, involved. Some of them are older plays. We've done plays by um, Strindberg and, um, uh, Mater Link, you know, stuff going back to the 1800s. But there's usually always, not always, but there's often uh, an element of other media, of film and video or puppetry or movement involved in our production. So I like to sort of uh, make a make a collage, so to speak, of, of work. So often art imitates the history and life around it. How do you think you'll implement some of the things that we've gone through as a society through this pandemic into some of your productions? Well, that's interesting. That play that um, Mud that I spoke about is originally took place sort of in the Dust Bowl, but I think we're going to set it in a future dystopia where <laughs> there might be a virus at hand and um, the characters are suffering for a different set of reasons. Um, we'll see. One of the great things I do think in a lot of obviously really horrible things that come out from this pandemic, but one of the great things I think that going inside and going within has allowed people to um, do is to sort of readdress things about their lives and look at the world differently. Like, what can we do to change things, to make things better, to live more fully? So I think that's a that's a silver lining to this this time period. Chris Barry, Barryman with us here on the Mega Cast, and with that, Chris, uh, some people have gone virtual. Uh, have you done any virtual plays and posted them for people just to kind of keep that um, you know keep the collaboration flowing? Uh, we have not done that. We have made posted video of past work and made, I, I called it a video stream of um, past work that we had filmed. Um, I would do that if something happens that this were to continue. And I have some ideas about how that could work. Um, the thing about Zoom is, is that it craps out so frequently. <laughs> and I don't like that. I don't like, I, I don't, I like to be in total control. I don't, I, I don't want it. I want everything uh, to be a certain way. So that, um, makes me nervous, but um, I certainly would. And there's a lot of creative uh, possibilities that come to mind how you could use Zoom and have sort of a more interactive experience with an audience. Some some theater companies are doing this and I applaud them for, for doing that. Yeah, so uh, have you been able to watch some of their performances? I have been able to watch some of them. And what was it? There was a great, it was from Boston and they were doing sort of an interactive, like you were inside the characters. Was it the three sisters? You were like following them through their house and everything. It was truly amazing. But I think the bummer was that my Zoom crapped out, so I couldn't um, continue to watch it. But it was, it was a, whoever put it together was a very creative mind. And um, it, was ex it was exciting. I think some of this will continue, some of this uh, uh, Zoom, uh, virtual interactive theater will definitely continue 
uh, in the future as well. So it's just a, it, we're, it's just, it's a new medium for us. So with so. that, um, Chris, if I can ask you, are any of the theaters reopen for live performances in the area just yet? I have not seen any reopened in the area. I could, there could be some that I don't know about, but it seems to me that the, um, the consensus is to, to keep things real safe. Now, I'll bet this summer with outdoor theater, there will be productions opening up and happening, such as the, the Shakespeare that they always do in Royal Oak. I don't know if that's happening, but I think things like that will definitely happen. And uh, I look forward to to attending some of that stuff. Um, I'm hoping that we can do we can have a uh, an outdoor theater maybe by the end of the summer or the early fall. So with that, when it comes to performances, it does take a lot of practice behind the scenes before you can stand in front of that crowd. Oh yeah. It so what does. would that timeline look like? Wouldn't you really need to start practicing about now? Well, you definitely would. And um, you can, some of that you can do on Zoom. Uh, and, but when push comes to shove, I think that you would have to be with other actors, you know, with masks, maybe in somebody's yard or a park or something. And um, I think that, some companies are practicing indoors again, but just in a very distanced way, you know, which um, I think that takes a lot of, uh, that takes a lot of management to make that happen in a safe way. So with that too, um, you know, we're looking at the profession overall. Do you think that, uh, you know, someone pointed out, well, after the Spanish flu in 1918, we had the roaring 20s <laughs> and uh, everyone was, you know, partying and living life. So do you anticipate that when we get on the backside of this, we're going to see, uh, you know, a big, a big push for people to get back to enjoy live music, to enjoy live events at the theater and plays, things of that nature? Oh yeah, I think it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna explode actually. And um, uh, bars and restaurants, I mean, we're gonna have to be careful, I think, to uh, to remain, because um, we don't, I don't know, because we don't know about exactly everything about the virus, how it mutates and everything. But I do think, I think there will be a, um, a renaissance of the arts in different ways, because people will be so excited. Like you said about the Roaring Twenties, everyone was so excited, you know, after the Spanish flu in World War One to, uh, party together again to recreate together again and um that that will be wonderful and i look forward to it oh so many people looking forward to that we're speaking with chris berryman detroit theater collective he is an actor as well as an author tell us more about your uh, children's book um is it finished right now it is finished and it is available yes um it is, you know, obviously we think we talked about how it came about during the during the pandemic when I was cooped up. Um, it is a children's science fiction story geared for nine to twelve year olds, but I think adults would enjoy it as well. And it's the story about two worlds coming together through um, the eyes of a gifted young loner, a boy named Christian Foster Leon, and who befriends a group of uh, extraterrestrial rebels and um, their for how their friendship develops and what happens uh, next as far as their adventures together. Is it your first book? It is. It is. So what was it it's like exciting. to not only write it, but, you know, illustrations and getting it published? Did you self-publish? I did self-publish um, through a uh, team-driven self-publishing company in Canada called Tellwell. And um, which basically means there was a lot of, they helped me develop this thing. And um, even though I was making the choices, they, they hooked me up with a wonderful illustrator named Sheng Mei Li. And she brought this book to life, uh, really inspired me the way she, she made these sort of anime inspired in, uh, illustrations. And um, yeah, it was just, it was sort of magical how it all came together. See, look at that. That's one of the great things that came out of the pandemic for you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. No, no doubt about it. Uh, is this something that you think you'll continue to explore? Uh, yes. 
as you go yes, on? Yes, I think I will. Not only with writing in general, publishing in general, but I'd also like to continue this story um, of flying saucer visions in another form, just to keep the story uh, going as far as another book in the future. Chris Berryman with us here on the Mega Cast. He's with the Detroit Theater Collective. And with that, Chris, just another minute or two before we say goodbye uh, for the day. A- anything we didn't ask or touch on that you want the population uh, to know? Um, no, this is so wonderful that you uh, uh, were willing to talk to me. And um, one thing that we have touched on it, but it, it's just um, one thing that I, I just have to say that uh, this this horrible virus and this horrible pandemic offered me was going within and just finding ways to to dig a little deeper for creative ways to um, to live. And I'm still I'm still discovering. I'm still finding new things. But um, it's uh, I think we're on the verge of something good, even though there's a lot of uh, gloom and doom in the news. Um, I'm inspired by the future, and um, uh, I think there's going to be some interesting things happening. Well, let's hope so. Brighter days are ahead for us. So with that, Chris, what do you think the overall impact's going to be for the theater industry as a whole? Has this forced people to shy away from the industry and, and find other um, ways to support themselves financially? I'm sure that it has forced people to find other ways to uh, support themselves. I hear in New York City the theater might be opening up in May or June. I don't know if that's changed. Again, I think we're just going to have to take this month by month and see what happens. But I'm hoping that, we'll, like you said, I hope we have another roaring 20s upon us. Oh. <laughs> I think that would be great. Well, if people want to follow along, because we do forget that there are other entities that still are not open. Mm-hmm. And that has to do with, um, you know, so many of our live performances and our, our live venues as well. So, Chris, if people want to find out more, where can they do so? Well, um, as far as our collective goes, you can go to www.detroit-collective.com. Um, and I, I think you can just Google search theater in Michigan as well, and uh, companies will come up. Um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good theater in the metro Detroit area. And so um, uh, I, I, I'm excited that we're going to have a, a chance to uh, – to uh, gather again and uh, experience this this communal uh, theater experience once again. Oh, that we're all looking forward to that. And I will say, I don't think we're going to take live performances for granted for quite some time. Excellent. How exciting. Chris, we appreciate your time. Chris Berryman with us here on the Megacast. He's an author. He's an actor. Uh, the Detroit Theater Collective, if you want to find out more information.